Hey guys, it's David from MTBootstrap.com. In this video, we're gonna learn how to add animation like this to elements on our website. We're also gonna see more animation like fade-ins, slide-outs, polls, and many, many more. And this is what we're gonna cover in this tutorial. So without further ado, let's get started. So as you can see, MDB offers a lot of different animations which you can use on your website to achieve different kind of effects. So for example, you can have um, this um, pulse or today uh, effects which allows you to focus user uh, site on the certain elements. So if you have certain notification like that one, it could have some animation like pulsing animation to um, catch users uh, attention to it so we very often use animation and I'm gonna show you a few more examples at the end of this video so in this video I'm gonna show you how to use and how to add animations there are three ways you can do it with MDB uh, you can do it via CSS you can do it via um, data attributes HTML attributes and you can do it with um, JavaScript or jQuery um, we're gonna go through the list of animations um, how we can launch so for example on click on hover on scroll like this one and few more options we're also going to learn how to invoke animation by clicking in other object like button over here um, and how we can use animation in our uh, project for example like this gallery fading gallery to achieve different effects um, also like this one we have the list so um, let's start with the basic example uh, in order to use animation download your MDB Pro package uh, from your profile page and open Visual Studio uh, code or any other code editor so let me do it now I have my MDB here let me open this with Visual Studio code open index.html and let's open this in a live server so we have it here and now let's get back to a basic example so I'm gonna copy this one and let's replace content over here so now we have our very basic example which uses uh, which triggers on click so as you can see we are um, triggering this animation we are applying this animation using HTML data attributes uh, so the very minimum we have to use is um, data toggle animation so this is the obligatory attribute and then we have two more so this one reset defines whether the animation can be used once or multiple times so if I'm gonna change it to false it will trigger only once and stopped over there and obviously we can change uh, type of animation so we can choose one from the list so I'm gonna change it to something like the dam and that's working fine let's get it back to true okay so this is a very basic example now let me get rid of this for a second and let's have a look at API section so within this API section we have three different usages actually four um, one is via CSS so what we can do we can uh, add this classes so here we have just icon and as you can see this animation is applied immediately so that's what's happening when you use CSS when you use CSS you can also um, adjust certain options um, like um, how fast animation is uh, you can set delay to one to five seconds you can set it to infinite so let's say we want to do it slower so I'm gonna do it slower which will make this animation last three seconds okay so let's get back to our 
default version with data attributes and let's continue with other options so here we have a list of animation and there are some extended animation however in, in order to use them we have to import them from animate extend css file which you're going to find in your package now what are the launch options so very first one you already know it's on click um, we can change it to on hover right so sometimes you want to launch animation on hover uh, we can we can have uh, this on load option so this defines whether we want to whether animation starts when the page is loaded and this is the example which you have seen in this example right so this is on load this animation is um, loaded on load and uh, it's triggered on load and we have this nice waterfall effect because we use different delay which i mentioned to you before mm then we obviously can um, trigger animation manually i'm going to show you some example uh, later on and we can have animation on scroll so let's do it here let's use this example and uh, let's change it to tada so we could see it better and we're gonna need some so i'm gonna add some div here because we are missing scroll so i'm gonna add some div over here so we have scroll let's make it even f bigger 130 okay so now when i scroll it start to animate However, as you can see, this animates uh, happens only once. And if you want to repeat this animation, we need to add this attribute called data animation on scroll repeat. And by default, this value uh, use once, but when we change it to repeat, the animation will trigger every time we scroll to the icon. Now, the next example, allows us to launch animation uh, via external element and this is very easy to achieve so um, what we need to do we need to add id to our object so i'm going to add id and we just need to use data animation target and data toggle and this allows us to trigger animate oh it's still on scroll so we need to um, change it to on click we do and now it works on click we can run it once and then again if we want to reset this we need to add this data animation reset set it to true and now we can cover trigger this and now we can trigger this multiple times um okay so um obviously we can change animations uh, let's move to uh, to api tab and fading gallery and and list group are more advanced but also very useful and very interesting components uh, so I strongly encourage you to play with it uh, while implementing on your website. So let's have a look at the API tab. Uh, so as I mentioned, we can use um, animation either via adding classes, CSS classes, data attributes, or via JavaScript and or jQuery. Mm, we can adjust all the options uh, either by data attribute or JavaScript. So uh, it's pretty much what we already covered. There are some other options like animation duration we talked about before, reverse. So um, it will it will reverse the animation and, and so on and so on. And um, we have some methods available for us. Uh, so I'm going to show you an example soon. And these are attributes or classes which allows you to uh, modify options when you are initializing via CSS. And we have some 
callbacks. So uh, let's have a look at this uh, at, at this uh, element. Uh, so let me let uh, get rid of this option here. We don't need this button. Uh, let's remove this content. Let's remove this button. Now let's leave um, only a basic example. Let's give it ID like this. And let's do something here. And let's have a look at our example. Manually element is not defined where we have it. It's 97. Yeah. So as you can see now, every time we start animation, it will uh, trigger an event and we can listen to it and react on that event. Okay, thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to uh, leave the comments down below this video or join our Facebook group uh, where you're going to find a lot of interesting discussion. And if something doesn't work, just let us know. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.